This is Andrew Stotz, and we're talking about careers in finance with Rafat Hashim. Rafat, why don't you tell us a little bit about what are you doing today? What is your work now? It's my pleasure to be with you, Andrew. Uh, let me uh, brief uh, you about uh, what, I, what I'm doing now. Uh, now I am uh, work at uh, a position as uh, assistant manager in a uh, publicly listed firm, more work in money management. Uh, our core uh, job in this firm, core work, to uh, produce uh, research uh, and studies for macro and micro. Uh, we cover Middle East and North Africa, publicly list and quoted securities. Uh, we make a business valuation, uh, sector analysis, uh, and macro and global analysis for the economy. Uh, we are uh, update uh, the other department to take a decision how to invest and how to allocate uh, and support them to uh, also create a portfolio to, to support our clients. And uh, uh, we have... Uh, uh, a team around uh, five or uh, five and th from five to six person in, in this department. We work really hard to support other department to take a decision on on, uh, on the same. So <clears throat> you've mentioned a few things. You know, one is related to valuation. Another one is uh, macro. And, yeah. you know, there's lots of different areas that you do in your job. Yeah. What is the area that you like the most that like is the most fun for you? Uh, my, my, yeah, I mean, the area, the, the area I like most uh, is the business valuation because there is different, different company and different sector. All company have its uh, own story uh, and need the, uh, uh, their methodology to uh, work. There is operation company. We uh, use uh, DC, uh, discounted uh, DCF, discount mm. cash flow uh, methodology. Another company we use market multiples. Some of the part there is uh, uh, some companies work on some of the part and financial sectors. We also we use market multiples and we use dividend discount model. A lot of each company have its own operation and our judgment to PN to first screen, screen what the company will uh, start to make a valuation and uh, each company have its own narrative uh, and uh, own story to uh, make a valuation. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that you mentioned the word story and you mentioned the word yeah. narrative. Yeah. Sometimes when young people are looking at the world of finance, they think it's a lot of formulas and calculations. But in fact, if you brought, broke valuation into two parts, you could say it's formulas and calculations and then it's story. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is the significance of story? Why is story such an important part of valuation? Uh, because you need to understand what's the business model of the company, what is the margins behind this company, why you are start to dig in to evaluate this company, what is the driver of the revenue, what is the uh, uh, staff or uh, top management or uh, what's the corporate governance work. All this would be coming to play to make a business valuation because you need to understand what is the sector in this company working, what is the customer, what's the value chain to work. All this coming to play when you start to make a business valuation for the company and you should back your analysis for this company and your formula to the uh, story of this company then you are convinced about this number you you see the scenario what's the best case scenario what is the uh, percentile after your analysis if you don't understand and work only for the uh, equation or formulas you will have have not uh, a sense what is the company or you not have the patient because you have the fair value of the company, you should have the patient to close the market, uh, to close to the fair value. If you understand, you not understand what is behind your number, 
you maybe will not have the uh, patient to uh, wait until you get the, 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 the fair price close to market price or what you need from mm. this uh, this company you should have the story you should know what is the sector you should know what is the overall macroeconomy you should also know what is the margin of this industry you you should imagine what's the market share of the company in terms of the industry i think story and narrative very important to pack in in your numbers and you are convinced and you believe the company and start to work uh, on this company and understand narrative and story very important for so the very way. Let's now let's now look at that in a little bit more detail. The first yes. step of the process is to study the company. You know, you 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 get all the information you can. You read their annual reports. You look at any information you can about the industry, and in that case, you're kind of looking at the present situation and the past. But yeah. at some point you then need to create a future forecast. And yes. for a lot of young people who are new to valuation, they're comfortable and they really enjoy the part about understanding where the company is today and where the industry yes. is today. But they oftentimes struggle trying to think of how do I justify the forecast? So maybe you could just talk a little bit about once you understand the narrative of the company and of the industry, how do you or how does anybody make a forecast? Uh, the forecast based on the, when you evaluate the company, you have a, a value of driver, the driver or the levers of the valuation of the uh, valuation is the, you should understand first the gross lever of the valuation. You should imagine how the market share will grow and what is the base, what's the gross driver of the sector first. Then you imagine the sector driver gross in terms of total uh, market share and total revenue. Then you base the company, ranking the company of the top 10 or 10% market share or it will reach after five or 10 years to reach based on your perspective and your judgment. What you imagine this company it will be reach 10%, 5% of the total market share was the gross rate. And this based on the, your imagination or your uh, simulation, what is the uh, uh, market share? This is the gross lever of the company. Second, the margin. What is the margin of the sector and what is the margin of the company? What is the stage of the company? It's a startup, it's a mat in maturity base. And uh, what is the uh, margin of the company compared to the sector margin? Because the margin and the profitability is considered the uh, uh, second uh, levers of the valuation. Mm. Third lever is the efficiency. How is this uh, company efficient? And when you uh, speak about efficiency, how efficiency used to capital to generate sales, uh, sales to capital ratio, uh, in terms of this company and related to uh, the sector and it will be in the future, what is the position in the future. Then the last dimension and the fourth dimension is the risk and this risk will be considered by the discount factor you will work, what is the beta of the sector, all this, it will come into play. You have uh, norms and guidance of the sector and you have the current result and you have the forecast, when you forecast the gross, you are not limited, you will not grow the gross, you have showed the capex mm. in terms of, if you, if you bought 10%, not like 5%, because 10% it will uh, require more capex uh, than uh, 2%. All things have uh, the dimension of how to make balanced number, and you should uh, convince, what the gross rate, the gross rate, if you are working uh, cash flow from equity, it will come from retention rate to return on equity to mm. justify your gross rate and terminal value. All this will come and this is need uh, mentors to guide you how to make valuation, first valuation, different sector, 
to understand how to put the norm, how to justify, how to read the financial statement, how to forecast, and this is really need some experience. Nearly what one to lead you to learn you how to make uh, the the story after and check the formulas to support your story in valuation. This is very important uh, to mm. understand. This is what I, uh, this is what right. I say. Well, there was a, <clears throat> there's a lot to that, what you've said. Um, the revenue, the margin, the efficiency, where you start to bring in yes. the level of capital, <clears throat> many different factors. But ultimately, yes. you also said, you know, you've got to, You've got to do a lot of them and have a mentor, have someone, you know, guiding you so you kind of don't make a mistake. What, yeah. uh, let me ask you, if you look at all the different valuations out there that you've done or you're looking, what, what is a range of a discount rate that you would say from a low discount rate to a high discount rate that people are using these days for the companies that you're looking at? And these days, uh, maybe we should have said, maybe we should have said last year. This year is the kind of crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this year, because uh, this is different prospect and uh, they uh, change from country to country. Because when you are using discount factor, you should work in uh, what is the country risk premium. Mm. Uh, also, what is the... Uh, 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 risk-free rate in this company and this is different we are in Egypt the risk-free rate are around 12 uh, from 10 to 12 percent uh, here in Kuwait we have risk-free rate it's 2.5 and now they slash to 1 percent of the coronavirus and uh, the oil price war between KSA and uh, Russia now mm. the oil price is 25 dollar uh, also discount rate based on the beta and this beta different from sector to sector from finance sector different from industrial different if you are work in uh, logistic transportation uh, all this different but here in Kuwait it's uh, around from 8 to 12 percent based on the sector wise yeah. uh, what about Egypt? We have uh, Egypt, I think it's uh, highly likely around from 15 to 17 because it's different, because inflation is different, risk free rate is different, and also country risk premium is, uh, is different. All this come into play when you, you, when you work in discount factor, and this is really the critical part to work. And also when you use uh, the discount factory mix sensitivity analysis or simulation analysis to see how the risky uh, in your valuation, in your assumption uh, compared to the current prices in 90 percentile or 80 percentile or 50 percentile based on your some assumption in relative to margin, to capital efficiency ratio, to gross factor ratio, all mm. this would, uh, to understand what is, uh, what is to, to, to put the risky analysis in, in, in your evaluation. Right. This is also very important, yeah. So there's so many different great things that you've shared yeah. with us. And I think that's what I love about valuation is that, you know, there's so many factors you have to think about and, you know, and try to come up with the story, the narrative, and I found in my career is that the story really is the key. If you don't have a good story, you can have all the numbers in the world, but if you can't yeah. construct the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but by the way, Andrew, by the way, Andrew, when I start my evaluation, I see your uh, videos uh, episode uh, regarding uh, the error in valuation or mistake, people mistake in valuation to overstate revenue, understate, uh, understate expenses. Uh, mm. All this, I, it's very amazing and give me a lot of information to work. Yeah. I think, this, yeah, yeah, in your story, in, in, in my story to make a business valuation, you, ha you should have a lot of uh, sources, a lot of uh, that diversified resources mm. to understand to 
I see your videos and also uh, I am very happy to share my experience with you because evaluation each country have a specific sector uh, specific work here also we have in GCC Aramco is the second uh, company over the globe uh, critique to uh, make valuation for uh, company like Aramco and when the, the the oil price go up and down this is like a, a call option valuation yes, option exactly. valuation very important yeah exactly um, yeah. okay so now let's shift into this um, you know in your career you didn't start at this awesome point where you're working looking at valuation or as, as my, my first boss in the business, his name was John. In fact, yeah. um, he hired me in 1993. In, in fact, I just got off the phone with him just talking about something <clears throat> about the markets. But uh, John said to me, it, this job is the cutting edge of capitalism because we're trying to help people to allocate the resources that they have towards profitable and high return projects and away from unprofitable and low return projects. And I never forgot that. And I always felt like it's such an awesome responsibility to try to understand the value of a company and the, the narrative of the company. But, and you understand this now, but you didn't start this way. Tell us about where you started and how you transitioned into this job. Uh, yes, okay. I started as an accountant. Uh, I have a uh, particular uh, commerce from Egypt in Shams University in 2007. Uh, after I uh, end my, I take my uh, uh, certificate, I have an aim to take a professional certificate. I don't know what is uh, the specification or specialization in mm. each certificate designation. Uh, I relocated in Kuwait. I'm working as an accountant in contracting and air conditioning uh, company. Uh, I work for three years. In this three years, I take my first designation uh, as the certified management CMA, certified management accountant from an Institute of Management Accountant through US. This is two uh, part, uh, uh, and uh, after I take uh, CMA in 2014, then. When I take this as the first designation, I uh, change my career uh, from accountant in uh, commercial company uh, and contracting company to uh, another industry. Uh, it's banking industry here in Kuwait. I locate in Kuwait International Bank and I'm working as senior accountant and I analyst. Uh, I work in financial control planning department for four years. Uh, and this is different experience than uh, work in contracting and work in financial control uh, planning. Mm. In some um, you have spread, you have interest revenue, interest different balance sheet and different income statement, different exposure. Uh, uh, I take my second certificate, certified public accountant in my in in bank. I take this certificate in nine months because my efficiency is increasing over time. Uh, 2014, when I take the uh, second designation, uh, certified um, uh, public accountant, I start to work in certified financial, a chartered financial analyst, because my aim when I take my peak in 2007 to work in investment industry, and this is really hard, to shift or to work in this industry in a one shift. I take it gradually, but I have the patient. I put my target and I work on it. I, ha uh, I and work really hard to change and shift uh, uh, to investment industry. Uh, after uh, CBA, I take CFA level one in 2000, December 2014. Uh, June 2015, level, level 2, CFA, and uh, 2016-2017, uh, uh, I failed in, uh, in the level 3, 
because it's really a uh, hard level to pass. Mm. But I passed in 2018. Uh, from 2015 to 2016, I work as a finance manager. Now uh, I shift from accounting, pure accounting, debits and credit, and uh, what is the GL uh, chart of account, uh, the prepares the financial statement to finance. Finance is different aspect. How to manage the cash flow of the company? How to manage the profitability? How to increase the efficiency uh, of the working capital? I learn a lot. It's a multinational company. I mm. am uh, I work as a finance manager. I supervise the team. Yeah. I have a new experience. Then after I take CFA level three, I shift to investment advisory service in uh, top 10 uh, accounting firm. Uh, I, I start to working in business valuation, start to see your video <laughs> because I have level three, but I don't have experience or the mentor yet to analyze and make uh, business valuation. I start to learn business valuation in practical in my experience. Through the mentors, through the videos, through the episodes, and then start to understand and work through experience. My team in Piccadilly, I work through business valuation, all types of company, industries, and financial company. All company have uh, this story, and I learn the evaluation. Not only you learn modeling, because modeling is the easiest part of the way, but to mm. understand what is the sector, understand what is the methodology, what is the approach we will work, income approach or market approach or uh, other approach if you, if you, if you uh, work in this, uh, work practically on, on valuation. Then uh, after this, I shift to my current work as assistant manager in uh, research in the studies department and this uh, pure investment company in quoted security and management firm, asset management firm. So let's say if I listen to your story, the first thing is that you started by building more strength and certification on your initial skill, which was accounting, your initial education. Yes. And then yes. once you had advanced yourself, because like you say, the, you took the CPA, you know, the CMA first, yes. then the CPA, CPA exam yes. that you took was in the US. Yes. And that exam is, you know, a very intense exam and you did it all. Yes. Some people take time to do it, but you did it all at once. So you really consolidated your knowledge in the core thing that you studied, but then you went from that to CFA to start to really go off into the area you really wanted to, to be in. So certifications, Absolutely. strengthening your existing education and getting the certifications sound like it was the key. And then to get you to success, maybe with the, uh, when you were in the uh, investment advisory job, you got yeah. a lot of good international feedback that gave you the ability to start being able to do it on your own. Yes, yes, because, uh, you know, Andrew, I have the competitive advantage now. I have the analytical part in CFA, how to value the company, but also I know how the accounting, uh, the accountant and the auditors produce a financial statement. Uh, also, we work really hard in impairment tests and how not only valuation the company, the valuation the assets itself, mm -hmm. valuations, uh, if the good way they need to impair, if the intangible assets, uh, unintangible assets, all this we learn from uh, the CBA and also CMA. I have mixed it in uh, accounting perspective, what is the rule and what's the difference between uh, US GAAP, what's the difference between international financing reporting standard, uh, how the, um, the, 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 the companies to normalize if the companies work in multiple entities, this is all uh, give me really a uh, very rich experience to work also. And I think that's an important part. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up at this point, but what I'm going to just mention is that, um, you know, accounting is really important. It's much more important than I realized when I started as an analyst. Uh, yeah. An analyst looks at a financial statement that's been audited, but that financial statement came from the company the accountants at the company, it came from the bookkeepers and it came from the employees producing the documents. And yes. the reality is, is that 
the way that I learned accounting was accounting. I had my own business, my coffee business. And yes. because of that, I had to really spend time digging deep for the last you know, years uh, to try to understand. And a lot of times I looked at accounting yes. in my own business, not as the exact rule, but more of understanding what each asset item is, what are our goals with that, if we need to drill down to that, what is that? And like you say, in your case, you talked about, you know, uh, testing the, you know, doing the due diligence on those assets. So yeah. I just think that the, a good, there's, there's three lessons that I think we should take away from your experience. Number one, you know, you've talked about the narrative in valuation and how to, to build a forecast. And that was a great yeah. explanation. The second thing is, I think we can learn about that you can change your career from whether that's accounting or engineering or whatever, but you've got yeah. to build the strength through certifications or other things that help you to really demonstrate to people that you have it. And then, yes. you know, um, the, the, the last thing I forgot, I have three things, but I just forgot what the last one was, what yeah. we just were yeah. talking about. But the point is, is that this, yes, yes, yes. Yes, this this is this is this is, this is uh, the, the main thing you, you, you are uh, you are reaching. You, you should have the goal and should insist to uh, go step by step gradually to uh, to your target uh, by patient and work hard. You will really reach what's the point you need. Over time, you will adjust from the point you have now to the point you need in the future this is a matter of time but only you need to be uh, focused and work hard and you will reach whatever point you put in your career you will reach it uh, through over time but you should communicate with the people you should have a lot of exposure with the people because the people will give you the roads every people have they have uh, will support you from his experience. When you have a lot of experience, a lot of dimension, a lot of perspective, you will put your own road, your own way, and you will reach your target uh, over time. This is very important. You should have a mentor and you should have an idol to follow. Not follow in foot step by step, but on uh, to have a, a final imagination what you need to be and steps to close over time this is uh, this is what i think this is a perfect ending i think you've explained everything in these parting words so i want to thank you for taking the time you know from your busy day to explain you know what what your career is like and the the what you've gone through and i also want to congratulate you on your accomplishments you're a man with a goal and you're a man with patience and diligence to stay focused on that and that's awesome uh, because uh, I owe you, uh, Andrew, because I uh, see your videos and you contribute my journey. And I should uh, share my experience and knowledge because already I take your experience and your knowledge and you share, uh, you, you assist me uh, to reach this point. Uh, I can't imagine myself when I... Uh, get your email this is uh, interesting for me because you are my ideal but when i reach my goals we are cooperate to share our knowledge to the people to get uh, the life of these people very good because if we are succeed on our uh, life share our knowledge uh, with the people, the society as the people will return this to us also and all of us will be win-win situation. Uh, I am very, uh, I, I would like to thank you to give me this opportunity to talk with you. Uh, uh, I like the way you are, uh, uh, share your knowledge with the people and you have very great experience but insist to understand, insist to hear from uh, different generation, different culture of people, different perspective. I learned this point from you, mm. and I will 
start to try to share my knowledge and understand and learn from other experience. Because Fantastic. we are growing. Yes, yes. We are growing because we are sharing and we are learning from other success stories. Well, I had tears in my eyes there because it touched me. My goal in life is to make myself better, but also to help other people along the way. And today, I want to thank you for coming on this show. And, you know, you've brought a lot of knowledge, but you've also made it so that I feel like my contribution has made a difference. And I appreciate that very much. Yes, make very different. And go ahead and continue. Andrew, please continue. I will. All right. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Yep.